uh, NASA is the bad guy for some reason. Okay, oh. to be fair, we just switched over. <laughs> what? Anyway. Hi, everybody. Wow, we went there right at the start, we so there. welcome. We, well, if you're going to get wet, you might as well swim. And you might as well just jump in the deep end. Uh, first. Anyway, hi, everybody. Uh, Cranky's in chat, like clockwork. Thank you, Cranky, for showing up tonight. We appreciate it. And anybody else who hasn't addressed themselves appropriate, accordingly in the chat, we appreciate you being here, too. Uh, we are back after a month off. And even our last game, we were we were short a player. So it's kind of, it's like, hey, everybody's here. Band's back together. We're coming at you with uh, episode 15 of, um, woot, woot, that's not how I taught you, but <laughs> episode 15 of uh, Curse of Strahd. That's it. But let's get into, like we do, the housekeeping that is always uh, at the, the forefront of our mind. Hmm stop doing that i would like to say that this epi episode is sponsored by malibu splash nope. it is a, not it is a tasty sparkling malt beverage with natural flavors and this flavor is the pink around here it is the strawberry and coconut so next next time we play strad i'll be streaming so i'll be able to mute bob next time with just no problem so he he won't give his plugs for malibu splash <laughs> anyway all that shit's going to get cut out. I'm going to start here with the new edit. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us today at Featherfall Tabletop. Uh, we have a few sponsors. You can check them out just below here. You can scroll down just a little ways, and you'll find a Found Familiar button that will take you to their website where you can get uh, fantastic fantasy-themed, D&D-themed uh, coffee. All the artwork on there is, is created by uh, community members uh, You know that get in touch with them over there at Found Familiar. Uh, so they're, they're kind of giving back that way, giving us great coffee. Uh, check them out, please. Uh, they also have other mugs and, and, and you know, accoutrement for your coffee uh, adventures. 10% uh, discount when you use code Featherfall at checkout. Next to that, you'll find a Skull Splitter button. Uh, that's where you can go get yourself some kick-ass dice. They have a bunch of new stuff coming out. It's not really dice, but they're dice uh, accessories. Uh, they have dice accessories such as like skulls that you can store your dice in. And even this is very uh, appropriate. One of them is a vampire has uh, the big fangs coming down, runic carvings all over the skull. Kind of cool. They have a big mug that is a uh, Viking themed. Uh, and they got some new uh, dice in there all the time. So you can check them out. Code Featherfall at checkout for 10% off. So this is Curse of Strahd. This is session 15. I'm titling it back to Velaki. Question mark for sure, because our party got some information last time that may send them back into the mouth of Velaki, um, a place that they left burning. And uh, there was a, a is 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 it a spree if it was only the one person? There was a murder spree. No, it was just there was a murder that took place. There was a, a building set on fire. Um, maybe you got out in time before things got too hairy but we'll see so they may be going back there but anyways we have a special sponsor here for this uh playthrough of curse of straw and that is roll 20 themselves roll 20.net this is how we roll you can have all of your virtual tabletop needs fulfilled uh by joining roll 20 and something we figured out today is we are transferring over in our star wars game to uh uh a 5e version of that and there's actually character sheets for that that was kind of a, a great revelation found by us or by some i not me I, i'll include myself in there anyway uh so we made character sheets the 5e way in roll 20 so that's kind of cool so there's not just like mainstream stuff in there there's a lot of a lot of stuff in there that you can check out um uh, they have you know all the good stuff so check them out please roll 20.net this is how we roll all right, that's housekeeping. I went super fast there. If it weren't for the interruptions, it would have been record time. But, you know, stuff happens sometimes, and you roll with it. So let's do a recap of session 14. Um, you guys started at the base of the, the old windmill known as the Bone Grinder, uh, having taken care of the at least one of the, the hags that uh, take residence there. Um, you took care of them the night before, and you decided to sleep in the windmill. Bold, bold choice. Couple things happened. You guys looted the place. You found some weird stuff, like you would in a uh, in a windmill titled Bone Grinder. I think uh, Tack, you you took a gourd full of the ichor that was in the in the uh, in the cauldron. Uh, Avi, you took some what was some bone dust that you definitely identified as human. 
and there's some other vials in there that you haven't quite got identified totally, looted the place, decided to take up camp there. Uh, in the middle of the night, Tack, we found out, I think the whole party found out, uh, a couple for sure, that Tack doesn't need to sleep anymore. Uh, he stayed up the whole night. Two of the people you rescued from the, the bone grinder uh, showed up, like <laughs> almost asking you again to take them back to Velaki, which was the closest uh, settlement at that point. Uh, now, you armed them a little bit, uh, escorted, kind of got them on their way, gave them some rations, and, and did not leave them wanting. Um, then you, made, you all made your way to um, Tesser Camp, which is the home of Madame Eva, who was the initial plot thread to get you here to Barovia, and we, we finally, that culminated. Some few questions, campfire stories, and you finally make it into Madame Eva's tent where she does a Taroka deck reading for all of you, giving you your future and uh, kind of sprinkling some uh, a guide to success. Madame Eva's guide to success in Barovia is what she's given you. Uh, and you have kind of a, a game plan now, some, some places you have to go. Do we want to recap what those were? Does each individual know the, the reading that they got? That might be mu too much to ask. Not off the top of I my head. <laughs> All right. So we'll, we'll start with Tack. If you want to go ahead and give us the reading that you got from uh, uh, Madame Eva and kind of what uh, what your next move is here. One second. Let me open it. I don't know why I didn't think that I was going to need this. but Oak too soon. Um, <laughs> nope. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I'll... If you don't have them, I have everybody. Yeah. So. What happened? I'm okay. really used as to where mine went. I, I actually, I, I took these notes. I wrote them down because, I, yes. Because <laughs> it was good times. Hey, um, hey, Tack, there's this mysterious fairy that is putting something oh, yep, in the chat see? for you. There you go. Uh, how's, it, how's it go? Um, so, Thank yeah, you. Madam Eva revealed my true name uh, to everybody. Thanks. Thanks for that, Madam Eva. Um, and my card was the seven coins thief card. Yep. And what I seek lies at the crossroads of life and death among the buried dead. Knowledge of the ancient will help me understand my enemy. Nice. Yeah, that was it. So, um, and, and you, I, I think you guys have thought, I think you've thought you might have been here before. I, uh, you, some of your, your offline chatting has led to us that this might be a place that you've already been to, which is kind of cool. Uh, we'll move to uh, Mirna. What, uh, what reading did you get? Myrna got Symbol of the Torture. How very uh, appropriate. The Nine of Swords, in fact. Um, for her, it was a town where all is not well. There you will find a house of corruption and one of them, a dark room full of still ghosts. Get the holy symbol and that will suit me more than the false symbol that I hide under my shirt. Oh, yeah. She's got to throw a little dig in there um, to your <laughs> to your deity. Uh, yeah. And I think we've... Have we narrowed down where this town is that all is not well? I think we thought Velaki, but then we really thought about it and like everywhere <laughs> in this world is not well. So Yeah. Um, I, I did remind that the, the kind of the slogan around town was in Velaki was all is well. Um, yeah. So that's kind of, yeah, I think, I think we got to figure it out. Yeah. Good. Uh, Cass, unfortunately was not here that night. And uh, you know, it's one of the, it, it sucks to hit those moments when, when you're down a, a party member, but it happened. Uh, Cass, do you have the notes of what your yes. reading was? If not, I can, I can read it, but if you'd like to go ahead and, and so the party, uh, yeah. So the party learned that uh, Cass has been in uh, exile for a while. He received the uh, the trader card, specifically the three of coins. Uh, power and strength tells of a weapon of vengeance, a sword of sunlight. Uh, I need to look to the wizard of the of wines. In these troubled times, the treasure hides there in wood and sand. Nice. That's um, correct. Do we have any ideas here? Uh, Cass thinks Mr. Wine Baron from uh, yeah, a long, assaulted. long time ago. Yeah. Yes. Um, He's Velasco, probably got something stashed. The Lasco Valentino, I believe, was his name. The one that you all insulted. And, yeah, he's probably not wanting to help you. But, 
All right. Well, I think it was mostly just Myrna who refused <laughs> to drink his wine. I'm pretty sure Avi and Bull were best friends with Yeah. This I and I believe there was like a stare off with uh, Tack who kept changing. Yeah. It kept was, becoming him. I'm pretty yeah, it sure. Got weird. It, got, it definitely got weird. Um, so that leads us to Avi. What was your uh, reading? I got to unmute in like six places, so I'm sorry. And big shout out to Dax for having the notes. Because apparently my uh, yeah, it's, my it's, office space here was cleaned recently. I don't know where mine are at. Uh, I got the ex. <laughs> it's true in true Avi fashion. Uh, I can't find what I'm looking for. Uh, he gets the executioner card. Uh, sheds light on one who will help you in your battle against the darkness. There is one that will help us in Barovia, which I think we all agree yeah. this is Mark. Yeah, um, he is called the lesser, but he holds power. No numbers. It is a face card. Yeah, yeah. Seek out the brother of the devil's bride. They call him the lesser, but he's a powerful soul. Yeah. So you guys have narrowed down that that could be Ismark. Uh, yeah, you guys kind of figured it out. And unfortunately, you left Ismark at the Locky, but <sighs> fortunately, you're heading back there anyways. So two for one. There's a lot of fortunates awesome. there. Bull, that leaves us to you for the last reading uh, from Madame Eva. Yeah, Bull got the uh, the ghost card, and everyone found out that he uh, had a had a brief run in with an, an Azamar that he maybe left behind, even though maybe he should not have. Um, so he's running for from something or to something. I don't know. Um, but it said this card will lead us to him, and look no further than the father's tomb. That's where we will find him. And nice. uh, I think we did like a little weird like ghost tattoo. Yeah, yeah. She she traced uh, kind of the ghost itself on your palm and almost like a branding kind of thing where it is now uh, left your palm kind of scarred and and uh, not healed all the way over. It is kind of, you know, like burns do um, kind of puss over a little bit. But you do have that. And and yeah, uh, and you kind of you kind of connected with her in a way that she divulged a little information to you, uh, but kept some close to her chest and then gave a little bit more to Myrna. Do you remember what all that information was? Oh. I, oh. Yeah, so um, basically it was revealed to us that, um, and, and part of it came from Bull, is that Bull asked, first of all, asked Madame Eva for a kiss, which she politely declined. Um <laughs> And uh, when he asked if she was Strahd's mother, she actually denied it and said that she's actually his sister. Boom. Got it. Yeah. So she, she came out and said there is a relation there between her and Strahd, just not um, matronly in nature. What, what would it be? So you got – what would be brother and sister be? Siblings. I mean siblings, but is there yeah, – I don't know. Anyway. All right, yeah, that was it, guys. And then she she kind of ushered you out of her tent and said, "Go enjoy uh, the the good times that are happening out in the in the camp." Um, and she she pushed you out, and you saw the lights close and and dim down in the uh, in in Madame Eva's tent. And that's where you all are now is standing outside of this tent, next to the river's edge. Uh, there is a line of horses there that are are, uh, you know, some are drinking, some are just kind of laying down, you know, horses lay down, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Only when they're dead. Uh, and some of they're just kind of like they're stabled for the, for the, the night or however long they are here. You could tell this t camp is well established. Um, and then everybody else is just back around that tent and some of the stories have died down, but still that, that sad accordion player sad only in the sense that, uh, there's not a whole lot of talent <laughs> there, not, but he's still playing and everybody else is still kind of dancing um, and, and drinking still uh, not a whole lot of uh, like individual stories being told. Um, and you, you all are on the outskirts of that, that shadow's edge of the fire. And this is where I leave it to you. What would you all like to do? It is late at night, I should say shadow's okay. edge. I think I just wander over to the fire, take a seat. I don't think I talked to anyone yeah. after the. Yeah, there's a couple like 
crudely built crates that have some hay stuffed in it that you can kind of sit in. And as you sit in, you kind of sink down into it. Uh, there's a couple logs and stumps and, and other just like sacks of, of raw material, like, you know, that have been stuffed with that same kind of hay. Um, but yeah, they welcome you down. <laughs> yeah, have a drink, and they kind of shove a, a you know a wine skin right in in your uh, into your chest there, and, and just immediately embrace you all. I will embrace them back and take the wine skin and start just chatting too. I'm going to move up and keep those horses company next to the river. Uh, and probably sit with my feet dangling in the water. Okay. All right. Yeah, and uh, I would encourage you to move your tokens on the, the in the roll twenty map uh, to where you want to be, and then that way I, I kind of have spatial. Um, yeah. So you kind of head down and pass one of the uh, the the bigger carts that um, we know that the southernmost had at least a storm a snoring um, Vistani in there. Uh, as you get to the the edge and you sit down yeah there's you find kind of a a nice boulder river rock that you can sit on and and just be able to get your feet in um mirna bull avi avi what did you say you're doing sorry that's awfully rude of you uh no I'm just I know, kidding. I um no i i would embrace their embrace and okay. take the wine skin dance Perfect. merrily uh I'm pretty sure Avi's got some great dance skills. Yeah, of course you do. It's how to um, cut a rug. Um, <laughs> it's all that Malibu splash that you drink. <laughs> uh, yeah, you come in and you 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 take the uh, <laughs> gives that liquid courage. Uh, it gives you see um, Cass embraced and you're like join in as well. Take the the skin and you start to dance around. There is there is a younger gentleman that kind of links arms with you and. That seems to be their really their go to move is, is they like to spin around and, and stare at you, <laughs> not like in a weird way, but just kind of like embrace in that in the joy that is happening there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Mirna, bull. What do you think she meant by um, uh, not an idol, but whatever a symbol that will do more damage than your false symbol. Well, clearly somehow she knew I was a cleric. So I can only imagine that the false idol she is talking about is the amulet I wear under my tunic. But as far as the symbol itself that we need to find, no idea. Although there is plenty of corruption in every location we have gone to. The question is, is it a weapon? Is it a holy item? I don't know. What do you think? I mean, first off, I'm kind of thinking that we should have maybe just stopped here on our way to Vilaki instead of going there and backtracking and having to go back, but... <laughs> if I sat and wondered about every little what if I ever took, I would never go anywhere. Yeah, that's that's fair. Um, I don't know. She seems to know a lot about us and the surrounding town. Is kind of interesting in why it's our party that has to, you know, take care of business. A good question, but I suppose it comes down to we were the fools that took the uh, Duchess's job, we were the idiots that didn't just slot us down a mirror where he stood. I think that would have been a lot easier, come to think of it. I do not put too much stock in fortune tellers, they like to read your face, your body language. I will not lie and say that some of the uh, details she shared were a little bit more specific than I would normally like. But for all intents and purposes, much that she said could be playing to us. 
Only time will tell. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess I might just turn in here. Unless there's something pressing that we need to do tonight. I think now would be a good time to just take some rest. Enjoy some wine, something to eat, and some sleep. I feel we are relatively safeguarded here. At the very least, there are safety in numbers. All right, well, uh, good night. He's going to misty step on top of um, Madam Ava's tent and <laughs> make his little bed. <laughs> I'll come um, up at Bull, and then I'll just shake my head and go sit next to Cass at the fire. Yeah, the, the tent is sagging enough that it's it's already like it, as much give as it's gone it there's no real place for it to go you're able to kind of cradle in between the ribs of uh two of the joists that are up there and just kind of get a little comfortable and you have a nice view of the moonlight coming off of the river there you can see the line of horses you can see you can ca just catch tack um at the end of the line there kind of dipping his toes in and out of the river um mirna as bull misties up one of the the dancers kind of lets go of avi and then comes and and over to you and he's like are you going to join us please come i do not dance what do you mean you do not dance I you mean, have I do to not dance just try it so take one foot forward and one foot back that's that's a good start if you don't want to move your feet like you can just move your hands and then eventually kind of it'll it'll start to wiggle down in your hips and your knees and then your feet and then your feet are in see and he he kind of reaches out to grab your hands and he he start he's like he's selling it hard he's dancing when he goes to reach for me i reach for my warhammer and i say if you do not back away i will never regret it <sighs> okay uh all right you celebrate in your own way and i will celebrate in mine Sure, uh, all all are welcome here. But all right, and he kind of like shuffles around and heads <laughs> back to the fire, a little quicker than he than he uh, approached you. <laughs> I thought for a second you were gonna dance. <laughs> you know, it was the no, it's gonna wiggle. It. It's just gonna wiggle and find its way down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I ruined. It. I went too far. Um, I loved it though. Um, all right, so yeah, you guys, if anybody wants to do anything, let me know. Otherwise, we're just kind of you're in your spots for a while and, and party one by one. You see some kind of trailing out to the different tents that are about. Um, Madam uh, Bull, you know, Madam Eva's tent just stays. Madam Bull? <laughs> Madam Bull. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well played. Uh, Madam Eva's tent, Bull, you know this, that it just stays super quiet and super like, just still. You're the only one making any rustling noise over there. And people just start to kind of uh, duck away and move into their respective tents as as the night begins to move on. Um, it, what does everyone do? It, anything you want to do, let me know. And we'll, no, we'll I'm just, just kind of partying and dancing, I suppose. <clears throat> okay. I think Cass is just staring at the fire. He's, uh, yeah, he's a little, okay. he's a little shook from the... Uh, from the fortune telling, so he's just kind of he's probably accepted whatever drink was handed his way, and then very deliberately kind of like mm -hmm, leave me alone I'm just gonna chill here by okay. myself you, you see a, a couple of the remaining that are there, you can kind of get the sense that they're just nestling in there for the night, like they're either too inebriated and don't want to make a fool of themselves and walk back to the tent, or they're just, it's you know, it's a nice night that they just you know, or it could be that they're watching you. To, I don't know. We'll be checking in on cast, but I do want to make sure that if anybody else has anything they want to do, that they get a chance to do that first. So, I know Tack is dangling his feet. Yeah, let's go to Tack. Uh, Tack, as your feet are dangling in this water, this one tendril of a... <laughs> sorry, dude. <laughs> of a... Um, of a tentacle starts to kind of wind up and it like goes in between your big toe and wraps around your foot and then goes underneath into the arch of your, your toe around your ankle and starts to come up and around. It gets to about your kneecap where it stops 
and it's not pulling it's just there kind of letting you know you know it's almost like a reminder hey you have a job to do and then it slowly makes that same wrap and then it kind of back into the water yeah i I just spend the the entirety of the night unless I'm disturbed, staring out to the water. Maybe occasionally even trying to skip a stone okay. across the the top of the water. But yeah, kind of the silent contemplation, unless otherwise disturbed. Okay. One of the ho the horse that's closest to you does kind of get comfortable to your presence over there, and you, you can tell it starts to you know make its bed after a while where it was kind of on edge catching side eyes at you especially when that tentacle comes out of out of the water uh, but it gets comfortable and, and beds down i think mirna and uh, uh Cass, if you'd have your little scene that's what i get for typing <laughs> sorry no you're fine um i'll probably let Cass sit there staring at the fire for a little while before i even say anything even though I've been sitting there. You look a little disturbed. <laughs> this whole situation gets stranger and stranger. That is putting it lightly. It's not exactly enjoyable to have pieces of your past picked up by someone you don't even know. Trust me, I know that all too well. I did not think I would hear that name again, ever. But they are the scowls that we live with. And whether we are the ones to bear them or others bear them for us, they are still there. You... You were in service for some time. I saw you coming in and out as I was working on various different things. But... Were you ever told why I was there? It was not my business to know. Understandable. I am indeed in exile. That much is true. So I'm hoping everything else in the prediction was also true. And for the rest of us. I for one do not want to spend the rest of my life here. So as much as I do not usually care to hope, we have to hope. That it was all true. Yeah. I've spent pretty much my entire life trying to get back there. And this place is the first time. I'm going to go ahead and raise my hand. As I do so, there's this kind of crackle of frost that begins to come over my fingers. This is the first time. I've even had a semblance of something more. It feels like a damn trick. All I've ever wanted was to be able to join the rest of my people, and here I am, being given more of the same power that got me exiled in the first place. It is funny what comes and goes with our life, isn't it?
This isn't of my own volition. Something speaks to me. It's toying with me. I let out a deep sigh as I kind of <clears throat> tilt my head back and just down whatever drink I have in my hand. As I shake it off, I'm just... <sighs> Not as benevolent as whoever you speak to. If you knew my entire story, you would not say that. And at the mention of um, basically what Cass just said, I, while he was drinking, I probably would have looked at every single party member. Okay. Just kind of checking on him, make sure, you know, counting heads. Yeah, counting heads and also just the weight of that sentence very applicable to Myrna for everyone that she's traveling with. <laughs> yeah, you see everybody um, <laughs> except Bull. He's he's on the other side of the tent, so you can't really see him, but he's you, there. You got a pretty good feeling he's there. Uh, Avi, are you still kind of dancing around and okay? Yeah. Tax over by the water. Tax there. You can see his silhouette pretty, pretty plainly through the, uh, the moonlight. And almost like three quarters of the way through that conversation between you, the, the two people closest to you do kind of stop and and, and zone in. Not, not like e eavesdropping, but just the, they're seeing kind of the levity being taken out of, you know, the, the room here, and just kind of. And, you know, uh, I'll say, Cass, when you were going for that final drink, you do see a hand come in and and kind of, you know, read in the room, give you give you that option. Probably would not say more the rest of the night. If right. Cass says anything, I would just listen. But at that point, now I'm alone with my own thoughts. Okay. I think Cass says one final thing. I think... I go ahead and I grab whatever drink is being offered to me. I grab an extra and I just set it beside me. And I just say, well, if all goes well, perhaps I find a little bit about that someday. And I just turn back to the fire and just drink. As you turn back, you see the two that are leaning up against the uh, the cart to the west have their eyes have closed, their heads have kind of ducked down. Um, the three that are around the fire are still there, but they're now their attention has just turned to the fire along with yours. And any frost that was on your hand, you can see start to like T one thousand like melt and just start to drip and. And, and you know fall off on your pinky finger and then just drip down onto the ground in front of you creating a, a small pool there um and you see one of them that's closest to to mirna there what did she tell you guys sorry sorry she guys got like really deep there kind of hey Sorry. I should mind my own business. Oh, perhaps you should ask when you are a little more sober. Ah, true. I remember. It's, it's good wine though, right? I do not drink. Well, yeah, you know, it's okay. It's okay. All right, well, uh, I guess I should go to bed. And he gets up and he walks back to one of these tents, kind of stumbling, leaning onto the, the cart there itself. Uh, this guy uh, goes away. And they go away. That leaves just you and uh, and Cass there around the fire. Uh, the other two that are on the wagon are asleep. 
uh, about an hour or so in, um, there is a person that does come out of this, um, this can or this a wagon. He comes out and he's, he's got to use the bathroom. So he comes out and he's like, looks around, sees the party's dead. Kind of points to a few of you, like, and then uh, passes it off, goes to the bathroom, comes back, goes right back to bed. Um, if everybody's good, we'll kind of uh, travel through the night here. Uh, Tack, do you want to? I mean, nah, you didn't. I'll take uh, <laughs> tax tactic here. I'm not going to ask you for a check if you don't want one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that you're the only one up. I'm not particularly watching, so it's a, a more kind of yeah, lost in my own thoughts, and right. you know, just kind of looking out over the water. So, any anything in particular you're you're thinking about? Uh. The kind of gravity of the situation is kind of weighing on Tech suddenly in that uh, he's he's been tasked with removing Strahd or killing Strahd to free his patron. Uh, he thinks free his patron is why he needs to kill Strahd. He's not, the, the full reasoning is not clear, um, but he also realizes that he seems to have drug all of his companions down this same road as well, uh, which doesn't sit well with him as he doesn't like to be the arbiter of other people's fates, as it were. It's not, it's not something that he enjoys, um, mainly because he's going to shortly come to the conclusion that he's, he's kind of responsible for what's going to be happening going forward and he doesn't like the idea of being responsible for most of those other people gotcha sorry about that tech it's okay <laughs> it happened yeah so you kind of just staring a lot of thinking every now and then you see um some insects come and hover over the the river there um See a fish come up every now and then, trying to crack, catch one. No more, no more of the tentacle, but it is, you know, it's out there somewhere. Um, and yeah, you just kind of slowly watch the uh, the moon start to shift away. Uh, Avi, did you? Are you bedding down anywhere? I imagine I just kind of like pass out by the fire. Um, and then uh, Myrna and Cass, are you staying around the fire? Is that where you want to uh, make your, your bed? I think I'm just going to go ahead and... <laughs> I'll, I'll stay a bit of a distance away so that I can okay. make my little ice bed. And then, because I don't want it to melt by the fire. Gotcha. But uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and set a little oh, away. Yeah. Set up my ice bed and then... Uh... Yeah. There's, there's a nice like grassy spot that doesn't get a lot of the foot traffic. Uh, that is around the fire that you're able to kind of set up and move away from the radiance of that fire. Um, and then Mirna, are you you hanging there? Yeah, I'll probably just find a log or something and just okay. lean up against that. Yeah, there's enough like sacks of hay that you're able to kind of like maybe lean up against if you want a little bit of comfort there. But yeah, you all kind of make your bed for the night. Um, other than the, the the bathroom breaks from some of the some of the the campers here, uh, it's pretty quiet, except for uh, a lot of you get a lot more forest noises, a lot more uh, when you're by the river. Again, the frogs start to come out, some crickets, some little buzzing buzzing bugs, and you those kind of like lull you into this sleep um, that are kind of missing in the uh, deeper into the woods where you've camped previously. But uh, sun, not the sun, I don't want to say the sun, but the moon goes away and, and it does kind of lighten and, and you do get your full, you do get your full, full rest, long rest. Um, people start to kind of rouse out of tents and, you know, still shaking off a little bit of the wine before, stumbling a little bit. And they immediately start to gather some goods for uh, some, some breakfast. See a bunch of, a bunch of thick iron pots and pans come out being thrown on the fire getting heated up eggs cracking into them uh, and they, they start making a breakfast 
Who who would be the first one awake? Mirna, would you wake if they were kind of like... All right. Not this yeah, guy. Mirna. I never went to sleep, so... Yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> Tag, you do you do see them start... You see every tent flap that opens, and you're like, okay, people are getting up. Avi, you've actually, like, passed out headfirst into the corner of Eva's tent. Your head is actually <laughs> under the tent. Uh, your That's feet fair. are hanging out. Uh, you, you, you moved a little bit in the night. That's not definitely not where you started. But you kind of uh, you totally, rolled, totally fair. Kind of found some uh, some coverage there. Bolt, you you got a nice bit of uh, a dew over you as you're you know up up a little higher and closer to the river. Um, but you're still kind of like your shoulders kind of hurt because they've been rolled together most of the night as you've been laying on the top of this tent. Um, still not a not a peep out of out of the tent itself. Mirna, you are getting the, the sounds of like some crackling bacon and, and some, some other kinds of meats and, and eggs starting to, to hit those skillets around you. Cass, same thing. About this time, Cass, I'd imagine your, your uh, floating uh, frozen disc starts to kind of dissipate and you, you do make contact with the ground and, and you know that's almost your alarm clock in a way. Uh, and yeah, you all start to get up. All the Vistani start to rise. Uh, one of them who's kind of looking over his shoulder at you, Mirna. Um, what's your plan today? You hanging around for breakfast? I imagine some of my party members would be a little remiss if they did not get something to eat. Oh, yeah, d definitely. We're going to have breakfast going here in a minute. Uh, you know, you like eggs? Of course you do. How do you like your eggs? I should. That should be the, the question. How do you like those eggs? I'll just hold out my, my clawed hand. <laughs> he's he's got like an unopened egg, and he's like, puts it forward, then takes it back a little bit. Not not in like a a mocking way, but just like, is this really what she wants? And reluctantly puts it in. You you're not gonna just eat that raw, are you? Ah, shell and all. Hey mm -hmm. hey hey, that's calcium. And he kind of like nudges the person next to him. Not like not like trying to make a spectacle out of you, but just like you but know, get a too little late. Bit. He's already making a spectacle out of me. Uh I mean we you know, we have more. Watch that. I'll wait for the Watch others. This. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he he starts, you know, and he's doing his breakfast thing. Um Tack one comes around kind of like he's you know, checking the horses and, you know, getting them their breakfast, oat bags. You slept by the river all night. That's interesting. Sure, I suppose. Are you just, you're not up early, are you? You just got up early before all of us. The horses woke me. Yeah, they, yeah, they, I think it makes some noise in the night. Anyways. Well, I think we got, you know, some breakfast going if uh, you want to join in. Sure, I'll head back to the fire. Yeah. And he kind of moves down to the next, working his way down. <laughs> Avi, you feel a, a little tap on your boot. And t -t -t what are you doing under there? What? What? Uh, Hey, all right, man. Uh, anywhere, anywhere you can get it, I guess. <laughs> Every, so everybody at this time is awake and starts to, uh, you know, get get their. Uh, I'm speaking for the Vistani here. They're getting their stuff ready. They're not packing up. They're just, you know, getting ready for the day. Um, well, uh, one of them, I guess, will speak to uh, to you, Tech. So you guys got big plans today? You hanging for the day, or are you going? I imagine we'll be pushing on shortly after breakfast. Yeah, where where to? Again, like what did what did Madame Eva tell you? Pretty sure our card readings are our own, sir. Yeah, that that's true. Sorry, just being <laughs> nosy? Yes. No <laughs> I mean we shared camp and wine and drink at that that's just where I come from, that's friendly. It's hospitality. There's a difference. All right. Well, I mean, safe, safe journey wherever you're going. 
I bet I know where you're going. Oh, do you? You can go that way. Any points northwest. Fair enough. All right. Probably are going that way, seeing as it's the only way out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you, can go, you can go that way. But it's fine. It's cool. The rest I'll of the I'll take my breakfast when it's offered. <laughs> yeah, the, you could see like um not plates, but like little discs of, you know, bark or whatever they can kind of cobble together. There are some there are a few tin plates. Um no no uh like ceramic uh plates that just they start to get filled up and like set in a line for whoever comes up. A couple of Vistani come up, grab one, uh and they go, you know, sit crisscross applesauce, just start eating. And yeah, you, there's one there if you'd like to grab it. I will. I will do so. All right. Yeah, you see a, a good, uh, good helping of eggs. There's a, there is a, a piece of bacon on there. Some sort of, of bread material that's just kind of been broken off of a bigger bread. kind of loaf or, or <laughs> bread material. Yeah, uh, it's more biscuit. Like, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking biscuit, but said bread material. <laughs> what? It's questionable bread. It's questionable, questionable bread. bread. Questionable bread. Uh, that's bread a deep like. <laughs> that's a deep cut. Uh, anyways, there is like some biscuit type that's been bro breaking off of a bigger loaf. <laughs> Broken Bird off of a bigger loaf. And kind of just given out, parceled out to uh, every plate that's there. Something to soak up. Like, soap. take five minutes to <laughs> <It's that laughs> like do some phonetics exercises. Um, I, that's the called. lazy lizard licked its lips. Yes, that. The arsenic of the shaped feet. Um, <laughs> the uh, um, unique New York. Okay, I'm good. Uh, yeah, that's that's an IPA. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, so there's some unique bread. <clears throat> Questionable, questionable density that is filling the plate, kind of soaking up any of the, the loose grease that is there. I am going to wake up and pull out of my pack my pies that I have. Oh. Pocket pies. And, <laughs> and just uh, offer oh. them <laughs> around and say, hey, I'm trying out a new invention. Tell me what you think. A new invention? A new invention. That looks like a... A new recipe is what I meant. I'm sorry. Yeah, I ain't falling for that. That looks like one of those uh, those meat pies from <sighs> the Barovian village. Uh, you are right. So we actually no. went into business with her and... Um, nah, you, bad, bad choice. You know what? No, no, no! Not, not human meat. That we, so we know, like, to be okay. To be fair, it's not human meat. It's frog. Well, We're trying frog this at time. One at one time, it was human meat, and I can say that for sure. <clears throat> okay. Fair. It's gonna, it's gonna need some, uh, like, publicity fixing. I get uh, it. It's gonna need some image rebranding. No, I I mean we got we got all the fixings we need. I I you're going to you're going to have to, you know, go somewhere else with that. I mean I'm going to just like throw them on the fire at this point. <laughs> uh, uh yeah, <laughs> whatever. It's it's almost like it just starts melting over one of the logs it landed on and just <sighs> clumps around it. Yeah, like I don't know what she said to get you into that business venture, but well, she's making, she's making those pies out of humans. I think she died. Ooh. That's going to mean that windmills open up. Yeah. Good to, good to know. I mean, what do you do with the windmill? Would I mean, are you going to use it to crush human remains like they did? No. Oh. We, get, we got like some corn, dried corn that we can crush up. We got... Uh, yeah, if y'all want to just pack up and come with us, I think we're I mean, heading that way. Right past acorn, us, straight up north. Some of those acorns you get out of those are. Is this dangerous. the same guy that was asking about what our reading was? No, this is different. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, because I don't want to say anything to that guy. <laughs> I want to be clear. <laughs> I don't want to talk to that guy. 
same voice, different guys. Okay. No, I've, I've met my limit of voices, by the way. But yeah, anyway. no, and uh, uh, yeah. I mean, it's yeah, it's clear like, they're all gone, all of them, all three I mean, of them. I I doubt we'll want to move, but you know, I'll I'll run it, I'll run it. I am see what happens. Wait, do you guys live here forever? Is this like your home yeah, place? We're kind of we're kind of here. I mean, we got the ability to pack up and go. I mean, I mean do you guys? Is it like farm area? Do they have like little crops and stuff? Here, no. This is this is a pure just like living area. Um, he was alluding to gathering nuts out in the forest earlier, um, but now we, we just gotta you know. Sometimes we go to the village and we'll get some goods and supplies and come back. But, yeah. <clears throat> Kendall and Avi. <laughs> hey, we already uh, called dibs on that uh, that windmill, so don't. Hey, what? Yeah, we already purchased the uh, the windmill. Other than the it. other than the wine, nothing wants me to be in this place longer than I have to be. So you can have it with these people, but okay. I'm gonna go. <laughs> Airbnb. Um, <laughs> Airbnb. You do, you do see as breakfast is like kind of finishing up. You do see a couple putting on a um, a simple little uh, haversack around, and they got like a walking stick. They may be uh, trekking somewhere. They're leaving camp for sure. <laughs> uh, the others start. You know, there are a few that grab some of the the finished plates and dishes and start. They walk over to the the river's edge. And start to you know clean up doing chores. Daily chores are taking place, and they they kind of like turn attention away from you as they they're going through their uh, daily routine here to start the morning. These horses for sale. We've got quite a bit of uh, gold and uh, straw bucks, I believe. Uh, no, we need these for. You know the the wagons there. So, oh, sorry, sorry. All all of them. I yeah, yeah. Some, I mean, some some of the horses pull the wagons. Some of them, you know, we ride on. Yeah, I'm I'm aware of how horses work. Um, I'm just curious if they're for sale. No, no, we we've never. Heck, no, we would never get rid of these. I mean, this one here <laughs> kind of smacks one on the on the the rear. It's ever been longer than I have. The horse is older than you are, or it's been in camp longer than you have. Well, no, nobody really knows. It's just I re I I never remember a time without this one. Oh God. Interesting. Bull will walk away towards the other party members and say, there might be some sort of memory uh, removing effect that is in the air. Memory <laughs> effect. I only remembers the horse as long as he's been here. I don't know. But it I seems mean, like he's not all quite there memory-wise. He's, he's a younger-looking gentleman older looking horse it you know did you look at the horse's mouth chicken or the egg well it wasn't a gift so i decided i wouldn't look in its mouth <laughs> <laughs> you'd never do that did you check the rings on the horse he Anything. did you have it in half really. first <laughs> <laughs> um like lengthwise or no 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 Cross section. Cross you got to get a cross section to count rings. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. So Dak. once once the group is around, the fire. get us back on track, please. Um, <laughs> sorry. Now I'm. Oh God. Cross section force. That poor creature. Um, once everybody is relatively close to the fire, and I would assume finishing up their breakfast, um, I'll turn to them all and say, "So, should we go back to Baraki and start there?" To the closest place, is it not? Makes sense to go ahead and... Well, that and we already know what we're dealing with. 
for the most part. Can we see the big map, Chris? Uh, yeah, we'll take you. Let me take you there. Um, mm -hmm, mm. Don't don't ask me why I have that meme already loaded. <laughs> I'm I'm not really asking why. It's a very rhetorical why. Why is this a thing? <laughs> so there's a sliced horse in the Discord chat that uh, it seemed Bob had ready. It, it's a piece made. of it's it's a purebred to be fair, horse. It's sliced bread. It's sliced bread with horse legs. It's purebred. Right? Let's, let's Get not it? confuse I... the viewers and the people that have to listen to this later. We are not looking at cross-sectional pieces of animal. It is purebred. I get the joke. Um, so <laughs> you are all here at the uh, the Tesser. Well, no, I should say you are all here at the camp uh, along the river's edge. You know the village of Barovia is back here, and Velaki is way up to the other side. Yeah, I mean, the crossroads is on the way to Valaki. I think we could stop there and take a peek. I believe these were the crossroads. Oh, you're right. You may be thinking about. These are the crossroads where uh, Cast had his kind of um, uh, weird right. moment off by himself with the body that was laying there on the platform. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. For some reason I was thinking it was... <clears throat> up there uh no that's where at that crossroad is where you saw and heard the uh the laughing uh lone wolf that was standing in in the trail up the way and you know that the other way leads you to um castle ravenloft yeah i'm good with whatever direction we want to go I suppose the better question is, do we have any idea of the Zimbalaki and the crossroads that we need to go? Because that will help determine do we take the detour now for the crossroads, or do we save it for later, because we are going to have to go that way anyway. I think the other one's the vineyard, but I don't know where that is. Mm. I think. Well, if we go to Velaki, yeah. do we want to bring Ismark with us to get all of the others? Better to keep an eye on him, make sure he stays alive. That's very true. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's gonna want to leave Arena though. Well, you're Arena. Well, he he did agree to come with us anyway, and we kind of mm -hmm. told him to <laughs> go kick rocks. So this is gonna be a bit of eating crow, I suppose. No, I believe we told him for his own safety he would be staying in Valaki, so all we have to tell him is that actually we learned that his safety in Valaki is in jeopardy and he has to come with us. So but I'm then, does Irina come with us? If his safety no. is in jeopardy? No. No. She must well, we don't I... say that his safety is in jeopardy. We simply say that Madame Eva said that he is an important piece of the puzzle. I'm sure that that, including, well, including the knowledge that he would be helping to permanently assist his sister will be enough to convince and him. And that is it. Right yep. there. I agree. Not even that he is a piece of a puzzle, but it will ensure the safety of his sister. If taking away him from Irina, she should come along, because honestly, she's the only thing stopping just any random human from walking in there. And, and... Then why did we go and get the boats? Where did we go through all of that if we were just going to drag her around? There's a magic barrier around the church now. That yeah, evil I'm can't Strahd enter. And his Strahd and his minions, but what about um, some person who's not a vampire? A vampire. <laughs> we're pretty sure that Strahd has human minions as well. Or mortal ones, at least. Or so we've been told. So. Yeah. He, you know, the, the coffin maker was in cahoots and that's ultimately why he met his demise mm -hmm. definitely still alive um, absolutely nothing to do with me <laughs> <laughs> um and you are about an uh trying to think of what you would know well i, I, mean, I will i would say if it helps you that i would have i would be asking some of the okay. vistani like where this vineyard would be since we didn't actually really learn that from him. 
Yeah, we could we can um, as they're kind of cleaning up and doing their moving on to their next set of chores for the day. You catch one. Uh, looking for a vineyard? Yeah, there's. I mean, to be honest, we get some of our wine out of Barovia, but yeah, there's one here for sure. Like right, me, right here. Tell like you where it is. Yeah. Is that super perfect? Yeah, it's a. Uh, Shoot, now I got <laughs> um, uh, to. Do, 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 do. You know, there's one spot. Let me Valentin see. Valentin Belasco. Blood of the Vine. Right? No. Blood of the Vine. Wizard was, of the Vine. Was, the, the tavern in Borovia. Blood of the Vine. Yeah. Mm, we're looking for the Wizard of the Vine. Or the Wizard of Wine, sorry. Oh, Wizard, wizard yeah. of Wine. Yeah, he's. Uh, you're going to want to go past the Locky. Um, and keep following on that, that road, not that road, this road. Um, let me see. Past Velaki. Okay. Well, that explains that we need to go ahead and take the detour now then. Well, that's three out of five. Four is the closer. Fifth is where we're going to find Strahd. So we should probably do the other ones first anyways. Yeah. All right, so then let's go to the crossroads and then we go to Balaki. I'm down for that plan. Seems agreeable. It's the least amount of backtracking, sounds like. Exactly. Sounds good. Whatever gives TAC the least amount of size, I'm down with. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm with TAC on that. Like, I do not want to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So I am all for making this nice, easy, and efficient. It's somewhere and it's starting to get a little thin. I'm always <laughs> walking around. But you're not a member. Yeah, and they kind of they give you a little bit more information as they hear you questioning over it. Yeah, you're gonna go. This way's past Balaki, actually. Okay. Uh, bef before you get to the second bridge, I believe you're gonna you're gonna take a left, and you're gonna go off off road a little bit. I mean, it kind of gets into. You know, a little unknown territory. Where's the second bridge? Well, you gotta go, go past Velaki. Have you guys been in that far yet? You guys have already been to Velaki? Just there, yeah. Oh. Alright, so before we get to the second bridge, take a left, so just take a left after the first bridge. If we've hit the second bridge, yeah. it's not too far. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, you know, a little, little wine headache going on. Hey, That's if I mean, if if you guys are going that far, you, you mind picking up some? We're running out a little bit. I don't think we're coming back. Oh, you're not gonna make it back this far. Yeah, you might not make it back. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Oh yeah. We'll make it back. Well, I, I was joking. That's why Madam Eva chose all you get. I'm sure. Uh, anyway, I got you know some chores to do. If you don't Save mind. The jokes for that one, and I'm gonna nod towards Bull. <laughs> See, he's doing like the, like the fake, like pulling his thumb <laughs> off. <laughs> That's a that's a knee slapper right there. Good one. He kind of rolls his eyes a little bit. So much judgment from the NPC. <laughs> so much shade. I would say you guys would know. I finally conceptualized in my head how you would know this is because you walked through here. You're about an hour and a half to two <laughs> hours away from the crossroads okay. south. Uh, and I mean, you remember the the long way you took, kind of climbing up the mountains, and up the hills, getting to the to the Tesser Falls. Then you know, you guys remember, you're about an hour and a half away. If you would go there first and then back up. Yep, totally remembered it. Yep. Right. Mine like a steel trap. Yeah. <laughs> he just laughs and continues on. Uh, I am ready whenever the party is ready. To the crossroads? Is that what we decided? 
Yep. We missed our Uncle Charles, y'all. Let's go. I feel like we're Bone Thugs in Harmony right now. Mm. <laughs> Who's Busy Bone? <laughs> that's the only. That's the only mm. one I know. I don't know any other names. Anyway, yeah. So uh, you do. If you walk out to the main road you came come, came in on, you do see that it goes uh, both kind of northwest and southeast, uh, traveling along most mostly along the river. Does you do kind of lose it in the woods a little ways down outside of your eyesight. Guess we're heading that way then. Yep. Also, oh, it's. Wasn't there a Britney Spears Crossroads movie? Why are you bringing up that? <laughs> well, stop it. it. Just like, stop. Why? I yeah. don't know who this Britney Spears individual is. Is that someone in Waterdeep? <laughs> I only oh, know Jamie Lynn uh, and her um, stop canon of work. Uh, <laughs> hey. Bob, quit bringing this stuff up. All right, yes, yeah, so you guys head southeast-ish, moving along the uh, river. I'm just, I'm, I'm railroading you guys. Uh, and <laughs> Please do. You are making your way there. Uh, hour, probably a half hour, forty five minutes goes by until you're you start to get into a denser section of the forest and break away from the river. And you spend about, uh, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes in the forest, and then it does break out again into an open area hill hill area up to your right and then up ahead you can kind of see the makings of that same crossroad that had the platform and um and there was a a, a small kind of cobblestone fence that did outline a, a graveyard there i just would like to point out for everyone that's been following along looking at the map now it would have been significantly shorter for us to have gone by the Vistani camp at the very beginning instead of yeah. winding our way well, through the okay. Okay. I totally yeah. don't disagree with you there. I, I totally don't. No. By our, all means. Our defense. But our characters were like. I mean, we didn't, yes. we didn't know that, but looking at yeah. the map now, like. Episode we're dumbasses, yeah. Uh, our yeah, defense. We can clearly see it right now. Our first encounter with Vistani was not good. And because <laughs> of because of bull, and so the, bull. the DM the DM it pointed was out bull. the rest of us were fine. Yeah. Bull was the only one that was affected, yeah. and there was consequences bull, yeah. of his own actions. Bull is yeah. bull and I are kind of kindred spirits. Trying to get information from some True. people at the bar, but this was yeah. already after we we passed the camp. Yes, fair point. Well, no, it wasn't. No, no it was in it was no, in Barovia. it was in Barovia. Yeah, it was in Barovia. Yeah, you know a few, <laughs> and they gave you bad just, breath. I think they. We just yeah. took the scenic route. That's yeah, it. right. We just took the scenic yeah. route. Now you know, um, and knowing's half the battle, but you are approaching this these crossroads again. Um, you do see this old wooden uh, platform, and there is that same kind of outline hump of a person that is laying on it still cloaked in in some sort of uh, kind of uh, uh, material there's a chilly wind that is kind of blowing and rustling a little bit from the high ground that is up on that hill that is blowing down onto this crossroad uh, the well worn road <laughs> splits here signpost opposite of the of the platform points off in three directions uh, one is the Barovia village and that you know that would be further Oh, uh, east. I had to do my thing again. Uh, further east, and then you see uh, Tesser Pool is the way you are coming from, and then you see Ravenloft Velaki to the uh, <laughs> to the west, um, the southwest there. Uh, and you know now that you can take that that Tesser Pool trail and get uh, and get to where you need to go <laughs> when you're going back. Um, across from the platform, you do see a low wall that is like crumbling in places, kind of put together by some cobblestones. Uh, it encloses a small plot of graves that are kind of, you can just see the, the, the tombstones kind of sticking up above the, uh, the fog there that is kind of starting to waft in. Uh, it, it's coming in from the east and meeting that wind of the west and kind of stalemating there and kind of creating a little, uh, a little black back, back flow. Well, her reading said it was among the buried dead. 
This is a crossroads. There's a graveyard. Mm -hmm. Anyone got a shovel? Well, can we? Are, are there like any actual markings on the graves? Um, you can see a few have some uh, worn-in markings. A lot of them are are like crudely put together like sticks that are tied together in a cross or some of them are just piles of stone some of them are an actual shaped piece of of material um that have some crude markings but most of them are all kind of worn away nothing nothing real legible appears to be the oldest grave Ooh, give me um Nature or survival? I always, I always kind of lump those two together. Um, As this is going on, if we're approaching the graveyard, I want to go ahead and put my hand to the ground. Uh, do I sense anything undead in the area? <laughs> Using my... Uh... Yeah, yeah. So you're... As, as uh, Myrna kind of goes in deeper to kind of like waft away some of the fog and kind of get a better look, you put your hand down and yeah, you're not feeling anything. There's no vibrations coming through. There's no, none of those kind of warm feelings you get when uh, those types of creatures are in the area. So you, you feel like this is actually a place of the dead that are dead. dead right. uh, Got to put the hunter's band to use. I love it. Uh, 19. 19. So the oldest one, yeah, you're able to, kind of like look through and you you find that there's um you find 11 total uh graves that are uh different markings that are in here and you you kind of come up with the idea that the oldest one is the one that is actually a constructed piece where change in time or practice has kind of gone to a more uh quick kind of just let's just put some stones here let's tie two sticks together where the older ones there are, there are three of them that are a shaped stone with some sort of carving in it um and they both they all look relatively aged the same but you could tell that those are uh older okay i'll as i'm wandering through take note and then turn to the rest of them so perhaps we want to start with one two three they appear to be the oldest. And are they the stones or are they buried, did you say? Everything is below ground. Uh some okay. of the some of the markings have just been some piled stones. But you can tell like the actual resting place of anything is below. Uh I'll go ahead and cast detect magic just in the off chance that we're looking for or anything else in the vicinity okay. is going to give off. It's going to take 10 minutes, but I'm not opposed to starting with those three okay. stones. Yeah, yeah I'll pull, I have a shovel in my adventures pack, so I'll pull it out and just start on the left one, I suppose. Okay. We'll, we'll go to the, whatever, the right one. The next one over from Avi and start just cutting up the ground with two daggers <laughs> to make it soft, and oh, he'll have... Um, Kane, his familiar, start digging in as well. Okay. So, are you, sorry, are you working together? No, different graves. Okay, sorry, I was trying to separate my mind here. Um, yeah, so go ahead and give me. Uh, we'll, we'll go athletics uh, as you're kind of digging through. Um, Adam or Bull, are you digging with Kane? Okay, yeah, yeah. So both of you give me athletics checks. As, as you're kind of pushing through some of this dirt. Um, Tack, you are casting Detect Magic. Cash, you are you are uh, in, I, I guess, recovering from your kind of um, Hunter's Bane. Yeah, and just Mir keeping up. Yeah, Mirna, what are you doing? Uh, I'm going to, for now, because I don't have a shovel, uh, watch to make sure nobody's going to walk up and throw a fit that we're digging in graves. <laughs> Good call. I rolled a 10. Uh, a 10. Okay. Uh, Bull, what'd you get? Uh, an 8 for both of us. Uh. <laughs> Damn, you guys almost need some help. Um, yeah, you guys are struggling a little bit. There's there's some uh, some sediment on top that seems 
rather rocky and, and kind of harder to get your a place where your shovel you see Kane is just picking up individual like river stones like and kind of placing them aside and you're able to kind of come in and, and get them out um, how how long would you would you dig here until I find a body or okay. something right. okay uh, without help it's going to be about 20 minutes as you are are, are digging through it before you finally get to a kind of a, a brittle rotten piece of a uh, wood wooden top that you can you can see okay and uh, yeah I mean once I get there I'm, I'm gonna try and pry it open I suppose okay yeah, you're able to use that that same shovel, and it's ready to break anyways. And you're able to pop it up, and it kind of like one piece crumbles in, the other you're able to lift off. And you do see uh, the tattered remains of a uh, skeletal remains of a, a human in there. No, no possessions with them whatsoever. No, there are like the few brittle remains of of clothing that would have been on being worn by this uh, person. Um. But that's that's all you see in there. Well, I guess I'll try and put the coffin lid back on, put some dirt back over, and move to the leapfrog bowl into the other one. Okay, uh, Adam or bowl, excuse me. You get down to your same kind of uh, thing. You see a, a rotten wood cover over uh, what was a coffin. Yeah, we'll uh, stick one of the daggers in try to pop it open okay yeah you're you kind of get down more personal with this um and you're able to stick that dagger in and get prop pry open that first board that runs along the edge uh and you're able to kind of see in there it it's hard to see exactly what's in there but you could tell there is something lying in there like something that's not a body or no, you you see like the remains, yeah, but it's it's hard if unless you want to pull it open even more. Yeah, feeling around, he'll probably just try to break the rest of it open. Okay. Yeah, you kind of pry open the few next few boards that line the top of this coffin, and you are you do see skeletal remains, same kind of deal. No no possessions whatsoever around them, tattered clothes, but just a skeleton. At the uh, the skeletal remains, say, "Hey, uh, Cass, this one has your ta your name tattooed on its on its arm." And I'll climb out. <laughs> it has my name. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. It says uh, Cass on it. I don't know. It's wearing the clothes of that that one thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna carefully step forward. Just take a look. And see one what it's wearing, and two whether there's anything on its arm. <laughs> <laughs> it it has like it, it used to have long sleeve, um, but it is kind of worn through uh, through just the aging process of being under the ground. You can't see any place where there would be a tattoo. You can't really tell what color the clothes would have been. You just know that there are some uh, strings and, and remains of something that was there. Well, that thing where he, like, pretends, shoves, it, shoves him in, but, like, catches him. He's like, you saved your life. Now you owe me one. Good job, buddy. I'll start walking over to the to help Avi out. <laughs> All right. Um, Since he's leaving my melee range, I'd like to use an attack of opportunity to whack him upside the head. <laughs> are you are you looking to inflict damage, or is this? Uh, no, no, I'm yeah. not kidding. I'm right. just kidding. Yeah, you're able to <laughs> catch him uh, and and understand the joke that Bull is telling you. Um, at this time, so I, I would say during the first dig by the two of you uh, attack your detect magic has gone off and you don't you're not getting anything um nothing is is pinging in your area other than the magic items that you all carry of course 
Uh, so Avi and Bull, you go to the third of the oldest and you start to dig. Um, we'll say it cuts down 10 minutes. You're able to get to there and we'll just kind of fast track this. Uh, yeah, same, same kind of, it's almost like <clears throat> cookie cutter the way these three have lined up. Um, but nothing inside other than those skeletal remains. So that's three down of the 11. And that ain't bad. <laughs> <laughs> so what? So we, we, we knocked out the three gravestoned ones. What do the other ones look like? Some rocks, uh, real quick, some wood sticks. I get to that. Uh, I just want to thank How I Nerd for uh, raiding us with your massive party. Thank you so much wow. for coming and joining us. Uh, I'll give you all a quick catch up. We are at one of the crossroads here in Barovia, and the players are digging through graves, trying to find something that is going to help in their quest uh, of defeating Strahd. So go ahead, Avi. What were you saying? So we, we dug the three actual gravestones. What is left for markers? Um, there are several that have just piles of stones. And then there are some that have like crude um, crosses made. And there's a good kind of amount of each. So but, 11 minus 3 is 8. Yeah, there's four of each. But none that stand out for anything different. No, no, no. I mean, you can give me... A I'm nature ready. or uh, survival check, if Ooh. you'd like. Ooh. I think I'm... Oh, shit. Uh, I rolled a six, but my survival is plus six, so 12? 12. Um, yeah, none of them really stick out. They're just... It, it's almost kind of sad how little attention has been laid to these remaining eight versus those first three. The first three, there was some craftsmanship at one point put into the into the stones themselves where these seem rather haphazard like you you examine some of the knots on the sticks that are tied together and it there's no like well, the people who did it didn't really know not making they just you know they're all granny knots that are just you know the quick and you know yeah. so it, it it's almost like uh kind of sad the little attention that has been paid to these people that have been laid to rest <laughs> um, I'll say thank you to Cranky. He just redeemed a D4 for anybody that uh, uh, needs it coming up. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Probably <laughs> after the third. Okay. Open up unsuccessfully. Well, if we are going to have to dig through all the graves, I suggest we start from the back and move forward. They will be the oldest. Well, it's a they work methodically. Good idea to me. Right. Can we do that? Can Bull, I guess, investigate the ones that we've already like exhumed? Because I, thinking back on it, it wasn't necessarily that we we're looking for an item. It was just um, clues knowledge to of the deal. Ancient. Yeah. 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 So this card tells of history. Knowledge of the ancient will help you better understand your enemy. What you seek lies at the crossroads of life and death among the very dead. That, uh, going back, that's the, the full message from Madam Eva. So, <laughs> uh, give me investigation checks as, it, and this will count for the three that are exposed. And we'll say, since enough of you are kind of on deck here, um, it's twenty minutes for one person, and then it, you know, halved for every person we add on. So, Mirna, you're starting at the next one in in line of this road graveyard um is anybody helping mirna yeah i will be all right uh, i wasn't Kat. digging i wasn't oh. digging i was just suggesting that if we're going to start opening up more graves we start from the back yeah all right good i, I like a small that. amount of shovels which i think is one uh -huh. Yeah, it, well, that's the point. It's like there's there's not a lot of shovels. It's yeah. like we know that people might come this way, so I'm making sure that people don't come discovering we're desecrating bodies. Perfect. I may um, not be that kind of cleric, I, but I have my morals, okay? I, I do have a question. Yeah. Um, so how packed is the earth here? Mm. Um, specifically in relation to this sentence, the target can pass through small holes, <laughs> narrow openings, and even mere 
cracks. Um, what is the likelihood that I could gaseous form into these graves? Wow. All right, say it one more time for me. The target can pass through small holes, narrow openings, and even mere cracks. So if um, it's rocky dirt, there's going to be lots of air, very porous. Good, good call. But what um, are you moving into? A, a body-filled coffin? <laughs> There's not I, much I, like, room. I, mean, I like this a lot. I like this a lot. I, um, of course, a body-filled coffin. Sure. Yeah, I mean, do. Um, uh, sure. I just don't want to set a weird precedent for future <laughs> where I get sure, screwed. Because absolutely. Now you, I said you can move through dirt. So, uh, from watching the other two kind of uh, dig through the first three graves, you notice that the first, you know, foot and some odd change was rocky with some filled in sediments but then it does get back into a more uh compacted <sighs> earth so i i would say you would have a hard time getting sure. past that first foot and a half um yeah so that'd be that'd be a little tough so let me ask you this Sorry. i hate saying no at the dm that was a that was an awesome kind of use of uh, the tools you have and but i hate what saying what about no. like there's like you know, Avi digs like halfway to the grave, and then the rest of the foot and a half tech. I, I got a, I got an idea. Can I wild shape and hand my shovel to somebody else into a digging <laughs> animal? So, like um, a badger or a mole, a mole or Ooh, um, a dog, <laughs> a dog, a dog even. Uh, a BLA. That's what we really want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I would. I would say, uh, Bob or Avi, you could get any number of those. You've seen them. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna uh, just. I'm gonna. Um, yeah. Going back to Mirna's question, the 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 first foot and a half seems to be some sort of like rocky, you know, uh, where it does get into more compacted. So it, it's kind of. Reversed where the gas is. Uh, yeah, but oh, so good. I think with uh, Bold, did you have a, a shovel or were you just going by hand, kind of taking a stick or something with your uh, servant? He was stabbing he had, it. He had two daggers, yes, and, yeah. the, and uh, <laughs> a weasel. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, well, I think with Avi wild shaping into a badger and, and handing the shovel to anybody else who would like it. Uh, yeah, you're able to kind of cut those down in time. I think with the badger now, uh, I'll, you know, we're looking at five minutes of grave. Oh yeah. Or with if you got two people, the badger and the shovel. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my trident out and use that as a pitchfork. Oh, Incredibly right. irritated. Yeah. And frustrated about having to do it, yeah. but I'm losing my patience. So I'm just. <laughs> Every <laughs> moment when you took, wish you'd taken Mulder. I, yeah. I'm going to mm -hmm. pull a pass, actually. And at this <laughs> juncture, I'm going to empty out a water skin and shape water into a frozen shovel and begin digging. Nice. All right. Nice. Well played. So if we want to split the party here and do Avi Bull five minutes on this one, and I'll say... As you guys are are thinking outside of the box, five minutes if um, Tack and Cass want to want to jump in on one. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, Avi Bull, same what, same what kind you? of thing. Except this time, there's not really a casket that you get into. The first the first solid thing you hit is bone itself. Um, again, no no product, no no offerings left next to it no possessions that are going with it um cast and tack <laughs> with your frozen spade and your trident every time you hit a rock cast you kind of like uh, kind of get you because you can just imagine the dings that are being dug into your blade you get into one of the one of the graves and you get down to a body um and clutched in the arms of this uh, this skeletal remains is something. Ooh. Um, let me. Um, so this is where it bothers me <laughs> because it, it gives 
I have a picture, but it gives you way too much information below it, and it's it's above the GM notes only line, so I know that you'll see it. Um, oh yeah, that's the worst. Yeah, I don't I don't want I made that mistake. So I'm gonna give me a second here. I'll screen cap this. Um, but you do see a a tome of a of a book wrapped in the arms, uh, uh, cross armed of this person. I'll grab up the book, hop out of the hole, and say, I think we found it, guys. Maybe. Perfect. What is it? A book. <laughs> A book would hold knowledge. Wonderful. <laughs> what, you don't like to read? No, 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 no. I just meant to... to, to, to uh, never mind. <laughs> and yeah, I will set to immediately examining this book to make sure it is, in theory, what we were looking for. Okay. Yeah. As you kind of like wriggle it out of this, this boned grip there, you do see it has some leather bound, but it does have nice metal inlays that kind of wrap around the spine and kind of that's what's keeping it fully together there is a lock that comes around and claps on the top and you do see the sigil that was on the handkerchief that valentine velasco dropped from his carriage as he was pulling away from you of course of course um sorry i'm here we go all right, that is uploading to our Discord the uh, exactly what it looks like. It took longer than it should. Oh, well, now I definitely know that's exactly what we were looking for. <laughs> left the name on there. <laughs> I know. That's enough. <clears throat> Strad for all you know, folks at home. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is titled the Tome Tome of Strad, uh, and you do. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty thick. I would say at least three to four inches thick. Is it is it locked currently, or is what's the condition of the the lock that's binding it closed? Um, it looks like it's there is that lock on the side, but it it looks like it's just resting on the top. Like you could open it. Okay, well, then I'll go ahead and open the book okay. and take a a quick gander. Yeah, um, here is. I'll show this all to you, show it to everyone. So yeah, you're getting a handout from the tome. Um, and as you kind of are flipping through this, you do see that it is written in the first person as it is Strahd himself writing this. And it goes into some, some detail that is quite personal. Um, and this one handout that... Uh, pertains to you specifically says i am the ancient i am the land my beginnings are lost in the darkness of the past i was the warrior i was good and just i thundered across the land like the wrath of a just god but the war years and killing years wore down my soul as the wind wears stone into sand uh so it's definitely coming from the voice of strad himself um and and it does just kind of detail some um some ongoings in his life. Uh, it's almost like a, a tell-all memoir of, of Strahd himself. All goodness slipped from my life. I found my youth and strength gone, and had and all I had left was death. My army settled in the Valley of Barovia and took power over the people in the name of a just God, but with none of God's grace or justice. I called for my family long unseated from their ancient thrones and brought them here to settle in the castle Ravenloft. They came with a younger brother of mine, Sergei. He was handsome and youthful. I hated him for both. From the families of the valley, one spirit shone above all others, a rare beauty who was called perfection, joy, and treasure. Her name was Tatiana. And I longed for her to be mine. I loved her with all my heart. I loved her for her youth. I loved her for her joy. But she spurned me. Old one was my name to her. Elder and brother also. Her heart went to Sergei. They were betrothed. The date was set. With words she called me brother. 
But when I looked into her eyes and reflected another name, death, it was the death of the age that, saw, that she saw in mine. She loved her youth and enjoyed it, but I had squandered mine. The death she saw in me turned her from me. And so I came to hate death, my death. My hate is very strong. I would not be called death so soon. I made a pact with death, a pact of blood. On the day of the wedding, I killed Sergei, my brother. My pact was sealed with his blood. I found Tatiana weeping. In the garden east of the chapel, she fled from me. She would not let me explain. And a great anger swelled within me. She had to understand the pact I made for her. I pursued her. Finally, in despair, she flung herself from the walls of Ravenloft. And I watched everything I ever wanted fall from my grasp forever. It was a thousand feet through the mists. No trace of her ever was ever found. Not even I know her final fate. Arrows from the castle guards pierced me to my soul, but I did not die, nor did I live. I became undead forever. I have studied much since then. Vampire is my new name. I still lust for life and youth, and I curse the living that took them from me. Even the sun is against me. It is the sun and its light I fear the most, but little else can harm me now. Even a stake through my heart does not kill me, though it holds me from movement. But the sword, that cursed sword that Sergei brought, I must dispose of that awful tool. I fear and hate it as much as the sun. I often hunted for Tatiana. I have even felt her within my grasp as she escapes. She taunts me. She taunts me. What will it take to bend her and my love? Now, I now reside far below Ravenloft. I live among the dead and sleep beneath the very stones of the hallowed castle of despair. I shall seal shut the walls of the stairs that none may disturb me. That was a long reading. Uh, I felt it, it would be better that we all just read it all together out loud. I appreciate it. the narration. Yeah. No. Uh, he made a pact in Ravenloft, fell in love with his brother's bride, killed the brother, and the bride killed herself. Yikes. Yeah, maybe. Big yikes. Maybe she killed herself. They never found her body. She yes. killed so. herself. She Adam tried to kill herself. Ava. I mean, that would make sense because then Eva still called him brother, so it's possible. I, I, I'm assuming, Tech, you read this all aloud or. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> Sorry, we probably just leave that. these graves the way they are, unless yeah, you know, that, I'm, I'm not. I'm not putting the dirt back. No, I, I think we can just keep moving. The wind will come fill uh, in. I don't think. we want to perhaps, if Strahd is watching us, not leave evidence that we have found something about him? I mean, I, I will help put the, the dirt back. If if Strahd put out breadcrumbs to find out how to kill him you think you know maybe he doesn't care who finds said breadcrumbs do we know he was the ones that left the breadcrumbs i think if he knew about him he would have done something about it himself and or perhaps he just simply thinks he's too powerful there's perhaps that too to dangerous hey we can help seal up those Stairs or whatever the fuck he was talking about. Dangerous indeed, man. I'll start putting dirt over the graves. Okay. Yeah, I think you they got through. Rest if they want. Yeah, Fine. No, I'm, I'm I feel like it's a waste of time, but probably not gonna leave until it's done anyway. So I will begin shoveling dirt back into one of these graves yeah. with your ice shovel. Yep. Yeah, it takes you, I mean, obviously, filling in takes you far less time. You're able to get those five graves uh, filled in in about 10, 15 minutes with all of, all hands on. Just uh, get them in, kind of packed up, and ready to go. Uh, Mirna, during this time, no one has been approaching up or down this path from any direction. Um, it's been rather quiet, as it is. It's fairly early morning. Uh, when you first got here, uh, I'm going to say you spent probably an hour and a half total here um so you now have the tome 
The Tomb of Tomin. I guess it's time to head towards Tomb of Shroud. Velaki. Yeah. Can we yep. make Velaki in one night? At this point, no. Uh, it took you almost a whole day to get to the Tesser camp um, from uh, Bone Grinder. Uh, now I'm going to say it's it's around 10 o'clock in the uh, uh, pre-noon. Um, so it would take you, you know, roughly eight to ten hours to get back up to Velaki. Could probably go to the windmill. Maybe make it there. It'd be a long day. Yeah. Eh, oh, no, it's two hours just back to camp. So that's. Yeah, why don't we just go back and hang out with the Vistani again like some chumps and spend the night and kick off in the morning. I'd be Provided they're still that. there and they haven't decided to caravan out. If that's the plan you wish to go with, <clears throat> let's do that. I mean, yeah, it's a safe space if nothing else, and traveling at night's less than ideal. Well, it's as safe as anything is in this place. Yeah, you're right. Probably would be best to not let them know what we found. I'll put it in my bag with my other book. Great. I suggest if we want to do any studying, we might want to do it here before we go back. This big book only looks to have the one entry in it, so... Yeah, there's a lot of the pages are just too tattered blank. and too blank. old. Uh, not blank, just uh, illegible at this point in its life. Um, but you can kind of make out some of the lettering is all the same, uh, knowing that it is, you know, Strahd himself writing this all through. But yeah, this one page, or a couple pages in particular, stayed pristine, um, giving the story of killing his brother... Uh, throwing, not throwing. She jumped. She leapt. But it's told uh, us two very important pieces of information. So, yeah, you got a few pieces. <clears throat> um, uh, what would those be, Cass? What <laughs> a recap for the audience here. One, the fact that this uh, sun blade is going to be incredibly useful. This sword of daylight. Um, and then two, as a blood hunter, uh, conventional means of hunting vampires will not work on Strahd. Yeah, so the uh, the stake through the heart doesn't kill it, though it holds <clears throat> it from movement. So mm -hmm. uh, some pretty good uh, uh, information there. Uh, so are you all heading back to Vistani or the Vistani camp at Tesser Pool? Yeah, let's head back. Yep. So yeah, as you are heading back north uh, up that side trail, uh, you do see a pair of Vistani that are coming towards you as they approach. Hey guys, come back already? I thought you were going the other way. And they point up north. Tomorrow, probably. Uh oh, you. And they, there's a little excitement. You're gonna hang out with us one more night. No. Yep. Yeah. Well, we're just we're on our way. There's a little uh, orchard of acorns over here. We're gonna go get, you know, some acorns, and we'll be back. We'll see you there. We'll uh, we'll smash acorns you together. Just eat acorns. Well, no, you don't just eat acorns. What am I, a squirrel? Oh, they're gonna go. You pretty sure they make them into soup or bread yeah, or both? Acorn soup. No, not acorn soup. Uh, but anyway, you know, <laughs> it's, it's an ingredient that we are, you know, it's time. Okay. Anyways, we'll see We'll see you back at camp, and they, they continue down the path. Um, and you guys, yeah, hour and a half, get back up to uh, uh, Tesser camp here. <clears throat> and you, you see people are now moving through and uh, past lunch. They're kind of cleaning up and... You know, moving on, and you see some of the the wine barrels come out and some skins being filled up, uh, like they're getting ready for uh, uh, party time. 
Um, Anything, anything we want to do, or I mean, we can, we can uh, kind of fast forward through this if you'd like. Is Madam Ava about? Uh, you, you see her tent; it is there, but no, she is not about. But you can see uh, uh, in or around the camp. I'll ask if she's accepting visitors. Ooh, um, and he kind of looks over at the tent. Well, her, uh, her, her flaps are closed, so. It's usually a no. I mean, to be honest, we don't really see much of her unless, you know, people like you come around. Fair enough. Thanks. I mean, she might come out tonight. I don't Why? You got, you got something you want to ask her? Or? Maybe. It just struck me that she looks familiar. No. He was one of a kind. That might be what's familiar about her. And he just like acknowledge, like laugh, like he has no idea what you're saying. Yeah. Um. If if, if nobody else wants to do anything, we can kind of push through. What time? Um, what time do we get there? I'm gonna say it's like one o'clock by the time you're wrapped up at the okay. the graveyard and walk back. So um, I'm gonna yeah, it's, find it's find a spot, and I'm just gonna like kneel, almost like I'm praying. Um, but then I'm gonna like put my hands down on the earth and cast. Uh, shit, what's it called? <sighs> Too many windows, earth. folks. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, plant no, growth. Plant growth. Thank plant you. Growth. You had mold earth the whole time. Plant growth. So if you cast a spell over eight hours, you enrich the land. All plants in a half mile radius centered at this point will be within range, become enriched for one year. Ooh. So the yield Are is you... twice as normal. All right. And I'm just. Are you, Are you doing this for the eight hours? Yeah, I'm going to just eight hours, just be there until. All right. I mean, it's not okay. like I'm in a trance where I can't pull out of it, right? I mean, yeah, you, you would ruin the spell or lose yeah. the slot, but yeah, um, <laughs> yes, yeah, so you grab kind of a spot that's already uh, fertile uh, towards the the southern end of of the camp, and you start your your ritual, and almost immediately the growth starts to kind of come up and intertwine, and, and it'll dive back down, and and it's kind of this ebb and flow of of. Uh, flora kind of coming up and then going down and trying to figure out uh what it wants to do and if, if we're good we'll just we'll continue on people are moving around and kind of setting up and and that same sort of atmosphere gets gets going that you first entered in uh, upon last night and everybody starts to have a good time madam eva's tent does not open up it does uh the flaps stay closed any light peeking out from underneath is, is non-existent um and so we said one. So yeah, around nine o'clock, Avi, your your spell uh, finishes, and and automatically little buds of some sort of what what are you planting there? What kind of because um, they didn't have any crops, so I would imagine. Yeah, could. it's really just what's ever in the area. So right. it, yeah, there's just, say there's some wild corn, sure. um, and and a few different types of gourds that kind of start uh, coming up and and almost instantaneously start to bear. At least the uh, the bud of a fruit, um, not quite um, there yet, but definitely looking good. And and yeah, as you were doing it, people are kind of like patting you on the back, saying, "Oh, this is gonna be great." You know, we don't have to walk as far and, and building up this <laughs> fresh gourd. Yeah. Um, uh, and then yeah, so they the same kind of party goes on. Same 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 thing. And if if we want to continue to the morning, uh, that happens without consequence. Once it starts to get dark uh, and people start falling asleep, um, I will actually gaseous form and slide into Madame Eva's tent. Oh. All right. Wow. Uh, Flesh throwing me a curveball here. Um you know, I I already I already closed that tab. Right. Of my <laughs> so, that browser tab's closed uh, already. 
Yeah, you yeah, you don't see anything. They they all left. Oh, what's going on here? So while I was searching through that, uh, at some point, Bull would have ducked into the shadows and then reappeared into camp, uh, disguised as Madame Ava. <laughs> uh, give me a... <laughs> give me a perception check. We'll, we'll see. And versus uh, Flesh, give me a sleight of hand. We'll, we'll, we'll do it that way. Light a hand. Well, I guess this wasn't necessarily like to get flesh caught off guard. It was like more to get inside information from the Vistani that were still like out partying. I'm sorry, uh, Bull. What did you say you were going to do again? Uh, cast the sky self to look at Madame Ava and then go around the fire yeah, and like, kind of talk to Vistani and okay. see. Like, sorry. In, in my brain, I heard that you were just. I, maybe I secretly wanted you to, but I heard that you were going to go in Madame Eva's tent and act as Madame Eva. Okay. All right. So never mind. Roll's not needed. Um, Tack, as you kind of gaseous form and uh, you almost look like the mist that is almost always ever present um, here anyway, so it's not really catching the eye of anybody. You come inside and you see the same, the low table covered in that black velvet cloth. You see uh, that crystal ball that was once uh, glowing so bright with different uh, images. Um, you see the different candles that have been burnt down and, and their, their wicks are kind of bent over. Um, but you don't see any buddy else you don't you don't see a present feel a presence of anybody it's 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 empty inside and uh bull as you are and, sorry tack did you uh if if she's not in there uh, i'm not going to waste any more time in okay. here i will yep. slip back out and uh missed my way back over to the rock that i stayed on last night uh, okay. and slowly reform there and uh, sit again. Gotcha. Uh, so, Bull, you uh, disguise self. You cast disguise self, yeah, as Madame Eva. Yes. All right, you're a little taller than a Madame Eva, as you can only adjust so much. Um, give me, uh, give me a deception check that'll work just uh, for your time here as uh, the Madame. There's a D4 unclaimed still out there from Cranky. Deception or... Perf Actually, never mind. It's the same thing. Okay, uh, I'm going to use that D4. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Olé. All right, that brings me to 14 total. <laughs> oh, all right. Um, 14... <laughs> Aren't you aren't you a bard and good at things? Like <laughs> well, before that was a seventeen, and then I had to reroll. <laughs> oh shoot! Um, yeah, you come, kind of, you position yourself behind the tent. You come out, um, and a couple of, like make eyes at you, and one of them does come over to you, like, uh, ma "Madam, Madam Eva, are you?" are you going to join us tonight? And you can see he's like really peering into your, your eyes and trying to like something's off a little bit and you can tell in his face. Uh, yes, my child, I've just come to, to sit by the fire and listen to the stories of old. <laughs> Don't touch me though. I'll, I'll make it on my own and I'll like kind of hobble towards the fire. Oh, I'm I'm sure y you will, Madam Eva. Like, where are you going to sit? Where's your spot? Oh, you know the usual spot. I'll make my way over there. Could you just guide me in the direction? Because oh, I've 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 been <laughs> looking into the future for too long today, and I've seemed to forgot the present. <laughs> um. No, no, you go ahead and show me. Listen, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I don't have my dinner, then I get a little bit um, foggy-loggy. 
<laughs> go ahead and uh, give me a wisdom saving throw. All right, that's a 12. Oh, you son of a gun. Um, you feel like as you're like miming um, what a Madame Eva would do, uh, you feel and you're kind of hunched over yourself. You feel yourself start to straighten up and you almost become like rigid and like the 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 pivot points and the, the bend points of uh, your your hips start to kind of your your hips thrust forward and it locks you straight. And you're kind of stuck there for a second or two and you could see the Vistani kind of like looking at you and watching and then you start to uh, lose that, that tension and you do relax and that Vistani makes eye contact with you and goes, yeah, it's not probably not the best idea to uh, play as Madame Evo. You know, you almost had me until you started talking. Eric, I've got to make them a two and he'll yeah, start yeah, walking towards me. Yeah, it's it's best to just kind of snap out of that. And he go, he he watches you leave um, just to make sure. He rolled uh he rolled pretty good on his uh insight. Or I should say you rolled kind of bad. Yeah, that was uh that was a six. <laughs> yeah. Um could have been better. The D four did help though. It kind of closed that gap. Uh any <laughs> anything else? You did you did save on against the curse though, I I should say. <laughs> there was some some rig and mortis <laughs> set. First in. first time this game. Yeah. Yeah. Um and, and if nobody else wants to do anything, everything party goes on like regular. It's almost like carbon copy of the night before. Everybody's having a good time. Uh telling the same kind of tales. It's almost like they tell the same stories every night. Um and then, you know, same people start to kind of pass out, go to bed. Um you guys night moves on without uh any any consequence. You all wake up same it's almost the same thing they're getting dinner ready or getting breakfast ready rather um and you know moving around the camp no bob seeger references adam <laughs> i am ready to go to valaki i am done with this camp <laughs> <laughs> they've been good hosts yeah, I mean, I'm, oh, yeah, I'm just, done. I don't have anything else here. I just want to get out of here. I just want to get out of this place. <laughs> God damn it, Ravenloft. Okay. Yeah, so you guys pack up. They're, they're going through their motions of, of breakfast. Are you staying for breakfast? Are you partaking? Are you moving out beforehand? I gotta, I gotta know from Avi. So you're moving out beforehand. Uh, maybe just chewing on some of your rations. Moving up north along the river. This does hug the river all the way to the bridge that that overlooks Tesser Falls, which, which now you are, uh, you know, almost a thousand feet up as this fall is coming down and just splashing, creating that same mist. You continue to travel up towards the uh, the other um, the other uh, uh, crossroads. One where you know leads to Barovia, or not Barovia, but to Castle Ravenloft. Uh, you do approach the gates that are open, but kind of uh, those tall pillars of broken warriors stand on each side. And we're, we're about four hours into your, uh, three hours into your uh, journey. Again, any any role play wants to happen, I'll, I'll pause, but otherwise I'm going to get you... Uh, fast track to Velaki here. All right. Yeah, so you keep moving. You do see uh, Bone, Bone, Bone Grinder uh, up up the hill there. Come around. By this time, it it is the sun. Any sort of semblance of the sun has set, and you are approaching uh, Velaki. All right. So when we actually get here, what's the first port of call? Twins, right? Yeah, Ismark is yeah. number one. <clears throat> Going to grab Ismark first. All right. Or at the very least, make sure he's still here. 
I mean, isn't he staying at the church with Irina? We would assume. He yeah. better be. Probably be but a good I'm point. having a hard time assuming anything in this place. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. How you know we get hole up for the night. We get there, the church is burned down. Could really be anything at this point. Cass, why would you say that? Yeah, wait a... Uh, quick, is a knock on wood or something? I guess bones yeah, don't protect head. against fire. Was I'm that, hoping you're saying a, it. Do, do we Man, have... was that a joke? <laughs> I don't know. Ah! <laughs> Darn cats. Um, sorry, y'all. Take Lost a moment. my composure for a minute there. Um, <laughs> um, do we know roughly what we have to find in Valaki other than Ismark? Like, we know we have to find something within the city walls, but do we? Uh, Ismark and the one? holy... Yeah, so, so one you figured out is Ismark. Uh, the devil's brother, the devil's bride. Maybe that has a new meaning after reading Strahd's tome. Um, he, they call him the lesser. The other is... Where, where you be? Um, yeah, you so be? blah, blah, blah. There's one that hops some Barovia. Get the holy symbol. <clears throat> Yeah, it's the holy symbol. House of corruption yes. within a dark room full of still ghosts. Yeah, a town where all is not well. Yeah. yeah. So the the symbol is the other thing we need to grab here. Yeah. yeah so okay. I I don't know how much you would know about a house of corruption. Um, you know of a few houses that are within Velaki. One is you know the Burgermeister himself, which you you murdered his right hand man Isaac. He's the other is uh, Vakta House, who you had an encounter with uh, two uh, the twin brothers, and you've heard some some rumblings of cult happening, and you've also had an an interaction with a spy of hers that was watching you. Right. Yeah. So we've got the lady's house, and we've got the burgermeister's house. Really, are the two. Sitting. One cult corruption, one political corruption. Take your pick. No. I'm going to go out on a limb and say I think maybe it's our political corruption. If this lady's running some sort of rebellious cult here in town, even if it's misguided. That uh, and it, I mean, the Burgermeister is always trying to force the idea that all is well. Yeah, which doesn't sit well with me. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. What if uh, Lady Valkner's cult is a cult of uh, Strahd? Or is the Burgermeister working for Strahd? Do we know? I think, I don't think anyone we know any of it for sure. No. Yeah. I would agree with Burgermeister first, though. Yeah. Makes sense. I mean, if we have to kill that guy and then he ends up not being it, my feelings aren't going to be hurt. You know. But if he's not it, why do we gotta kill him? I mean... We just don't go around killing everybody. I mean, unpopular, unpopular, unpopular opinion in this group, I agree. It's, it's kind of our MO, though. <laughs> we do just kind of murder people that get in the way. Well... I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, didn't he Not already everybody. try to murder us? Well, no, he. Isaac. Not Isaac. Yeah, Isaac. Um, tried to murder us, but, I mean, we kind of baited him into that. That yeah. was. That's, you know, that's true. I mean, we, we knew how that was going to play out, and that's why we, we did it. But well, I think first yeah, task is his mark. Territory. First task is his mark. We gotta find his mark. Yeah. Yeah. He might have a better idea of where this house of corruption is, if that is a term that's familiar to him too. But let's I mean we push on to Ismark. Yeah. All 
All right, onwards to the church then. Okay. As you approach these 15 foot high walls that kind of encompass this, uh, this town of Balaki, you do see some guards standing along the top uh, pulpits, uh, you know, armed with their normal crossbows. You see a couple through the wooden slats of the, of the, uh, the gate itself. And as you approach uh, coming out of the darkness of night, uh, who goes there? Best to keep moving. It is it is us, the party of five. We have returned to uh, <laughs> save the city. Is that what we're doing, gang? We're we're here to meet uh, Ismark and Irina. They are they're at the church. Uh, I think I I recognize a voice. Come closer. Let me see your faces. Did he really just tell him where they were in here? You put the jester in the front. No, that's okay. It's okay. Oh, we didn't put him there. He put himself there. Let us be clear. No one spoke up. I love Bull, but there are days I just... If I really was Myrna. <laughs> Bull, bull, walk up and like, <laughs> and he kind of catches, you know, his torchlight filters through one of the slats in the gate. I'm gonna knee bull right in the back of his knee <laughs> as he passes me, and just whisper, "You remember I look like Irina, right?" <laughs> the deep stare of tax right through you. I actually kind of forgot. You two have subtle differences. It's it's like if I was looking it's at... So Twitter. subtle. We're different genders. Uh, oh, uh, as you kind of stumble into the gate after the knee, uh, the, the, the hit to the back of your knee. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, actually, uh, come on. Come right on in. And you see the gates start to open inside. Uh... To the inside. I'm gonna pull my hood up. Yeah, I'm gonna wild shape into like a dog <laughs> because I am not like we're probably wanted for murder and destruction of property and whatever arson that may be there. So I'm gonna kind of go around the side and wild shape into a dog. I mean, to be fair, only bull would be wanted for murder. Well, what or why? Yeah, we could be accomplices. Maker. No, no, no. We were absolved by the guards. We had the discussion. True. He but was the one that true. lied to the guards, saying that he was the coffin maker, and then like screwed that up. It looked like and they the found his Meister. body. Yeah, he did look like the. He did look like uh, someone else. To be fair, so. so party of four and a dog. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> Walk through the gates. A girl, a guy as, a as the gates close behind you, you hear this ringing of a bell from up top in one of the towers. And you hear several of the guards start to yell out, they're here, they're here, everybody! And it just starts ringing the bells. And coming down from the main road of the lock, you see some of the guards that have, were on their uh, paces through the, uh, in the inside of the town start to come in hearing that bell of alarm. <sighs> Uh, and before you know it, you have uh, 15, 20 crossbows that are, are loaded and pointed at you. And the main guard... To be fair, I want to make sure I wasn't, like, walking with them in the party. Like, <laughs> not like I'm their dog. Uh, I'm okay. a dog walking we're, in. We're going to let the dice do this. We're going to go guard versus dog. Um, let's do an original sleight of hand check as you are doing your uh, your wild shape outside of, a, of the gates. I'm sure this ends well. Yeah, uh, and there's no D4s for you to redeem that I know of. Uh, that might be a hint to chat. You know, if you have the channel points, you can definitely spend 1,500 of them to get a D4. I rolled an, a 7 plus 2. That would be 9. There's a D4 in there from Adam Aslamas. Oh, <laughs> that doesn't count. <laughs> 
You got it. Who's that guy? Um, you definitely got it. Add a d4. So n- a three. Okay, so we're at twelve. I rolled a thirteen. Oh, you son of a bitch! Yeah, like literal thirteen. Um. <laughs> but how? So th- they 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 saw you transform and and with uh bull saying party of five counting around and and you are known entities in town they know they're looking for five of you um uh and one points over to you avi as you're this 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 mangrel mutt that's trying to sneak off into the oh i think one of them turned into a dog get him and you know they start to corral you all uh uh, it's a good thing you guys came back we didn't have to go looking for you uh, and what the is the pro- meaning of this? Well, you're wanted on a few accounts of uh, arson, murder. Oh, really? Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and uh, you're going straight to the Burgermeister's house. Uh, so perfect. If you can, yes, it's fine. Uh, I'm sure he'll have such great words for you. And he kind of, you know, is ushering you with the, uh, the, the front of his crossbow. And out of curiosity, what is the evidence of said arson? Or murder, or murder. Well, Bull. Burgermeister will have all of the details according to your um, arrest and crimes that are being appointed to you. Um, you mean but, you are arresting people and you do not even know what you are arresting them I for? Will, no, I will say it's not difficult when Blinsky squeals and tells us everything that happened. So murder will be easy to find you all guilty of. And he continues to point you and, and usher you down the main uh, road of Velaki, uh and, and towards the center of town to where uh, you you know the Burgermeister's house is. No. No, it, it's best just save your words for the Burgermeister. Save them. You, they'll have no effect on me. I can't help you at this point. And... That's where we'll end tonight, uh, kind of uh, on a little cliffhanger. You guys are are in custody, custody, uh, here at Velaki. Um, yeah, you guys got to pay for some of uh, the things <laughs> that took place your last time here. You were able to kind of get out uh, before they all uh, the pieces came together. But we'll see. We'll see what happens and what the Burgermeister wants to do with you all. Um, we'll see. Who knows? Um, you need to if go anything, anyways. We're just in the right direction. Yeah, if anything, we've yeah. just been escorted. Um, we've been like, escorted. Oh, perfect. This is fine. It's great. Yeah, we've been given an armed escort to exactly yeah. where we're going. <laughs> hey, joke's on you. This is how I wanted to be escorted into Velaki. Anyway, uh, we're going to end it here, guys. Thanks for everybody in the chat. Um, <laughs> that's right. This is Payback Robo Ray Gun. I am arresting uh, <laughs> uh, Billy Zed. <laughs> For arresting my character in the Wild Mount game, it all it, it all comes about. Well, but anyway, what, thank you all. One of us <laughs> actually committed murder. Yeah, you actually committed. Uh, yeah, one person did commit murder, and one person did uh, start some arson, and uh, one person. <laughs> I didn't. No, uh, I, I did I not. Think there were multiple people who did this, but I mean, uh, in uh, fairness, I killed the coffin maker. All you started the fire. Uh, 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 but there was conspiracy to murder. There were vampires, there, so. okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and and from what you know now, Blinsky may have squealed. Uh, and and if they search why. me, we're gonna have a problem. <laughs> you don't know how or why. Uh, oh, but anyway, I have his iron tight defense. <laughs> I, I have his whole fucking arm in my bag. I, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Wait, you what? He I have his arm. His, you you his have fake arm. His prosthetic yeah, you have arm. Okay, wait, I, I, I missed an episode, arm. and y'all tell me what you do, but you leave out the part how you took an arm. Y'all did. It's a magic it. arm. It's a magic. It's a magic arm. arm. Prosthetic That's arm. That's why we got the ping of the magic items was because of that arm. Uh, yes, that and no other reason. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, let's save this <laughs> for next time. Uh, we'll we'll come out firing next time. Uh, thank oh you all God. in chat uh, for uh, sharing this night with us on uh, this Sunday night. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm going back to work tomorrow, so I'm not too excited. But we'll make it happen. Um, 
Anyway, thank you all. Uh, it's been another session of Curse of Strahd. You can catch us here tomorrow night with our newly revamped uh, Star Wars 5e edition instead of, you know, uh, Force and Destiny. Uh, we'll have thoughts about that tomorrow. If you want to join us there, you can hear us uh, ramble about that. Tuesday, we're back for session two of our Call of Cthulhu campaign beneath the Umbral Veil. Uh, things are, are getting good. The investigators have got some uh, information, and we'll see where they go. Uh, and then Wednesday, we got like back to back to back to back. Uh, we're here for Wild Mount. We'll see what happens with our characters as they are being, you know, trying to be arrested or run out of town. And then we got a little break, and we'll be back um, Monday for something. I don't know. We'll see you. Schedule Monday. Is Monday our- will be another Star Wars. We're gonna yeah, we're, we're off cycle enough. this week. Okay, good. Yeah, so you'll get back to back at Star Wars. Anyways, I want to say thank you all for uh, hanging out with us, and with that, we'll say good night. Okay. Uh, bye. 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 bye.